Of course, it will suck if you do gift exchange and you get your own gift back. This video is brought to you by Brand.Work. If you want to improve your problem solving skills and be in the community with people who like math around the world, be sure you guys go check them out. Okay, as we all know, when we have 4 factorial, we can work that out as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and that's equal to 24. But have you guys ever seen the situation that the factorial is in the front? Here we have factorial 4. Now what does this even mean, right? Of course, I will show you, don't worry, but you know, I would like to ask you guys to subscribe if you have done so already. You can see a lot of interesting math questions on my channel. I think you guys will like it. Anyway, let me explain to you guys what 4 factorial means. This right here means that we are trying to calculate the number of ways to arrange 4 items, and they have to be all different items, on a line. So you can imagine, the 4 represent, you have 4 choices to arrange the first item, and then the 3 means the next item, you have 3 choices to arrange that, and then 2 choices, and then the last one has 1 choice, and then you multiply them, you get 24. Well, you see, this is kind of like the backwards, you put the factorial in the front. This right here is what we call the derangements. This means we are trying to calculate the number of ways to arrange 4 different items, but none of them goes back to its original place. So that's called the derangement. And now let me just show you guys a scenario so that it's easier for us to relate to what we are trying to compute. And by the way, I think the answer to this, I think you guys know the answer, I don't, but we will see how to figure it out. Anyway, let me give you guys a scenario. As you all know, Christmas is coming, so you are going to meet up with your three other friends. And then you guys are going to do gift exchange, right? So let's say this is the first person, second person, and then the third person, and then the fourth person. And you brought A, and this person brought B, and give C, and then give D, so on. Of course, it will suck if you do gift exchange and you get your own gift back. Anyway, we are trying to calculate the number of ways for we to do gift exchange so that none of us gets our own gift back. And that's one of the application of the derangement situation. In this video, I'm going to show you guys the recursive way to understand derangements. So, derangement of four objects. Well, I don't want the first person to get A because that means that he or she is getting back his own gift. That's no good. Likewise, I don't want two to go to B, I don't want three to go to C, and four to go to D. Hmm, here's the deal. I'm going to start with person 1 right here. As long as I don't assign him to A, that means I'm good. And you see, we have three choices to do so. I can assign the first person to get either B, C, or D. So I have three choices to do so. And now let me put down 3 right here. And suppose I assign him to get gift D like that, right? And now we actually have two situations to consider. Once again, Factorial 4, the way that we approach it is that we prevent the first person to get his gift, right? We prevent the first person to get A. Now, here is the deal. We have to focus on the fourth person right here. Why? Because this is serious. Because I already give the gift D to the first person. There's no way for the fourth person to get his or her own gift back. Right? Because D is to the first person already. Now, it depends on two situations. It depends if the fourth person takes the first person's gift or not. Namely, if the fourth person takes A or not. Suppose if the fourth person doesn't pick A. You don't want the fourth person to pick A. That means we have an issue. It's similar to what exactly just happened earlier, isn't it? Once again, earlier, I didn't want the first person to pick A, and we put down four, uh, factorial 4 like this. We prevent the first person to pick A, that was factorial 4. This time, if you don't want fourth person to pick A, so I'll just say this is like no, no, right? This is no. You don't want this to happen. You prevent the fourth person to pick A, and you see right here you have three people, you prefer one of the person to pick a specific gift that's exactly the same as saying factorial 
3. Okay? Once again, refer back to the original situation when we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and A, B, C, D. We put down factorial of 4 is because I first prevent the first person to pick a specific gift. Factorial 3 is because we have 2, 3, 4 and then A, B, C. Factorial 3 right here is because I prevent the fourth person to pick a specific gift. So this right here is the arrangement of 3. Okay? Now we have to add. The second situation is that if you don't prevent the fourth person to pick A, rather it's a yes, you want him to pick A. Right? You want him to pick A. If you assign A to the fourth person, then you are set to go. This is also taken care of as well. Now, you only have to consider two people and two gifts. You just have to do the derangement for the two. That is going to be factorial two like this. So wonderful, isn't it? Of course, we can generalize this to as many people as you would like. So here is the note. In general, when we have factorial, I don't really know how to say this, when we have subfactorial 4, okay, subfactorial 4, so I will just say subfactorial n, subfactorial, right, subfactorial. Anyway, this right here is equal to the following. Well, earlier, when I put on 4, right, this right here is after the factorial, the subfactorial. This right here was 3. So, subfactorial n, you first do n minus 1, and then you multiply by, you see the 3 and 3 match, that means you will have to do subfactorial of n minus 1, like that. And then you add it with, well, how can we go from 4 to 2? Of course, just 4 minus 2. So you do factorial or subfactorial n minus 2, like that. This right here is the recursive formula for subfactorial what derangements. So if you would like the, the I'm sorry. Yeah. Because in order for us to calculate subfactorial 4, I need to know subfactorial 3, subfactorial 2. So let's start with the beginning. So I will have to make no more notes for you guys. So here we go. When we have subfactorial 1, this means you bring your own gift, which is like the microphone. I cannot do gift exchange. I will always get my own gift back. I have no friends. It's equal to zero. <laughs> Here we go. Next, subfactorial two. So just imagine you have two people, right? Just two people. Of course, the only way is you give the, they just pretty much exchange each other, right? You give A to the second person and you give B to the first person. So subfactorial 2 is equal to 1. And you know what? Congratulations! Because once you have these two starting, you can use this. And by the way, this right here, it's really like Fibonacci. If you would like, let me write this down for you. You can put this down as a n, like that. And in fact, this is the same as saying n minus 1 times, this is like saying a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2. Isn't it? If you didn't have this, this right here would have been the Fibonacci sequence, but you do have to have that. So that becomes derangement. So subfactorial 3 is the following. All you have to do is you do 3 minus 1, which is, let me just write it down, 3 minus 1, which is 2. I know that, okay, don't worry. I know that. And then you multiply by subfactorial <laughs> 3 minus 1 plus subfactorial of 2 minus 1, like that. Well, well, this is just 2 times, this right here is the previous one, right? Subfactorial 2, which is 1, plus the previous previous, which is 0 like this. So in another word, you get 2 times 1, which is 2. And now, subfactorial 4, well, this is going to be 4 minus 1 times pretty much subfactorial 3 plus subfactorial 2, which we did that earlier. So this right here is 3 times, this right here is 2, plus this right here is 1. I don't need to explain. This is equal to 9. Therefore, subfactorial uh, 4 is equal to 9. Like that. Wow, look at that. I think 
This is so cool, isn't it? Yes, right? Anyway, hopefully you guys all like this video. And before we go, I just want to tell you guys about Brianda work. If you're interested to learn about how to solve interesting challenging math questions, or just to learn about new mathematics, be sure you guys go check out Brianda work because they have a lot of interesting courses such as calculus, discrete math, probabilities, differential equations, and a lot more. You guys should definitely go check that out. Also, you guys can sign up for a free account and start to do their problems of the week questions. They have new questions each every week, ranging from basic to advanced, but some of the questions are really hard. You guys will enjoy it. Anyway, if you are interested to sign up for their annual premium subscription, be sure you guys use the link brain.work slash black and red pen so that you guys can get 20% of discount, which is really cool. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and thank you so much for checking brain.work and thank you so much for supporting my videos.